peace be with you. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. At isang magandang linggo na naman tayo sa ating lahat. Good morning to all who are listening. Um, for those who are in America and good evening for those in the Philippines and afternoon to the rest of the world. Um, it's Monday of the third Sunday, a third week of Easter. Yesterday, we have heard the gospel of St. John when Jesus called on upon the disciples. And they cannot see Jesus, but they heard the voice and they were so excited to see him. You know, that is the same thought. The excitement, the longing, the longing and the next, the excitement. It is a, a constant for those who have learned to love Jesus, know him. So they seeking to find him again, just like Mary Magdalene at the tomb. She was in great sorrow because she knows, she knew Jesus died. So she, when she came to the tomb and Jesus was not there, there was great sadness more on her heart because she knew Jesus was there, but now he's gone. Where is he? You know, the longing, and then the excitement when she heard the voice of Jesus. The excitement that that is my God, that is my God. And same thing with Peter, same thing with John and the apostles. So that is the same message that we are trying to impart this Easter, the longing for Jesus, the continuous seeking of his love, of his presence. So today, we know that Jesus is the bread of life. And the gospel, the part of the gospel that really strike me is Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, they say to you, you are looking for me. Not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. And this is my constant reminder to everyone. You know, we pray, we pray. And um, when we pray, we have this long list of things we need to ask of God, which is not wrong. We need to ask him what we, not, we needed in, in life. But if we also trusted him we would know that he knows what we need he knows who we are he knows what is the desire of the heart the content of our being god knew us from the very start of our creation but also look at the other side what is God is as what is God's expectation of us? Are we delivering what He's asking of us? Are 
are we bringing forth what God is asking for us so that he could be with him, we could be with him? Why do I always speak of that? Not because I'm pointing fingers, fingers on those who are not doing it right or doing it perfectly. I am no judge of anybody. I am a sinner just like anybody else, everyone else. But what I would like to share is this joy. You know, just like what I was telling you. I was, I am going through this full pain, uh, uh, something that was just brought upon me, something that was brought upon me from the day I was born until this day, and it is come and go. I do not even know when it will come again or when it will be lifted up. It will just be dropped on my plate, and I will just accept it and carry it. But you know what? There is joy each time I have to go through this type of pain because that is when I feel Jesus is within me in every step of the way. You know, the for somebody who is going through pain, for you to lift up, to hold on to a rosary, it hurts. Because you cannot crunch, I cannot do this, it hurts. It hurts to do something like pinch, pinching of my fingers, it hurts. But each time I hold on to each bead, each time I will do this, it hurts. It, I, each time that I have to kneel, it hurts. But why? Is it masochist? No. Because there is joy. There is inner joy coming from within that in my pain, in the deepest corner of my life, in my being, when I am in the presence of Jesus in each pain. Because as a person, as a, a person in pain, I cannot do it on my own. I cannot do it on my own. I will be able to accomplish this only through the help of the Holy Spirit. And that is what I believe on. Anything in my life, I will not be able to accomplish anything without the help of the Holy Spirit. What is important to me, and that is part of the gospel. You know, Recently, I was moved into a new position or actually new accounts, key accounts from my work. It is like a bit of promotion because you will get an increase in your salary. But just before it was given to me, something had happened. I am so sure of everything that I was doing. Every phone call I make, I make sure that I am serving. I am making sure that each contact is not just a contact for me to earn money, but to serve. But one transaction had a core wherein I do not have any recollection. Nothing, not even the person or not even the transaction, nothing in my memory. And that is my cue. My cue that something is wrong with me. 
if I am not able to deliver and it will mess up someone's funds or it will cause other person's savings or life or anything. It's my cue to stop. Some people will probably not, you know, even if the company will not do anything about it, because you know, first mistake, or it is a mistake that it is not that much uh, to focus on. That is important for me. Because if I do not remember what I did wrong, if I do not remember what I have done, if I do not remember what transpired, it will hurt me later on. Why? It is important for me to know what I'm doing. because I am serious of not committing a sin. I am serious of not hurting my God. I am serious in not offending anyone. I am serious in not thinking wrong about anyone. And if I will let that slide, how many times will I let others slide? How many times will I just let it go and forget that I made a mistake to someone's soul? So just the one thing, one time it happened that they do not have any recollection of anything in my life, I stop. And that is my cue. And I recite. Because it's important for me to know what I have done, to know what I do, to, do, to know what I say, but also if God will take away my memory, my strength, everything that I am, I am willing to let it go because I know he knows what he's doing. But while I can, while I still have a chance, I will not let it happen again. I will not let it happen again because I still control. I can still control what I can do. What I cannot control is what God will give me or what, what others will do to me or what others will tell me or speak of me. But what I can control are things that I can do, say, or think. And while I can still control all of them, I will do my best to serve because that's how I would like to seek my Jesus. If I am in the state of grace, my Jesus will still be with me, will remain in me, and I remain in him so that I can bear fruits, fruits that will last, so that the food that he's giving me will bring me to eternal life. And it is important. So seeking Him daily, day in and day out, is what it matters to me. So I encourage you, 
if you still can remind yourself of things that you can do and things you cannot do. Refrain from worrying about the things you cannot control. But make sure the things that you can do make sure that Jesus can smile seeing, looking at it. Every time Jesus will remind you will remind him of you. When he hears your name, he will smile. When Jesus hears your name, there's proudness in his heart. When Jesus speak of you to the Father, there's pride in his heart. And that's what I'm longing for. That's what I'm aiming for. That's what I am desiring to do to make Jesus proud of me because I am proud that He is my Savior, that I am proud that He is my God, that I am proud that He has saved my life. And while I can, I will do my best to keep it consistent in my life. So let us talk to the Father. My conversation with Him, together with you, the prayer of my soul, my spirit. Heavenly Father, You are my God, my Creator, my Almighty One. I bow down to You with all of who I am. I bow down to you because you are the father of all fathers. You know me from the day I was conceived. You know my words, my, my longings, my desire, my needs, my wants, and everyone I am praying for. You know them all. And I come before you together with them, knowing that the littleness of who I am is offered not for my own desire but for your desires for all of us there is nothing constant in this life except for your love your mercy your compassion your understanding and i would like to seek that all the time and let the rays of your love flow upon all of us. Enter our family, our home, our being, that you become the center of our world. You become the center of our life. You become the one that unites us all. May the love that we feel for you become our strength, our healing, our forgiveness, our security and protection. Father, for all of those who still do not believe, for all of those who are suffering because of depression, of anger, on unbelief, of things that is not of you, for those who are dying but have not asked for forgiveness. For those who are living in sin and doesn't have any clue how far it will bring them to hell. For those who are starving, for those who doesn't have any knowledge of your presence, for everyone in this world, for every child, for every adult, for every parent, for every husband and wife, for all nations, for the leaders of all the nations, for every priest, nuns, missionaries, for every cardinal, bishops, popes, pastors, for every human being that live in this world. 
we bow to you, O oh God. Let your will be done upon us and let your mercy flow to us like your ocean of love, your ocean of mercy. Bring forth the healing upon healing. Bring forth the abundance of your grace to fill the house with the food that we need. For the blessing we desire to fulfill our hopes, our dreams, but only if it is in accordance to your will. We are yours and we believe we are yours. Make it see it, that beautiful reminder of your love that we are believing the God of Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. And may we see the goodness of your love always in our heart forever and ever. In Jesus' holy name, through the Blessed Mother and Saint Joseph and all these saints, we bow down to you and we praise you. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.